So now there's a study out showing that e-cigarettes are as effective as nicotine patches. And this is being blasted all over the place. I've seen it on the news numerous times on different stations. I get Google alerts every day from just all these different newspapers and all these articles that are all talking about this remarkable finding that e-cigarettes are as effective as nicotine patches. Oh my gosh, this is just such groundbreaking information. And it's so well covered. It's, it's like everybody seems to know this now. And I want to point something out about this study. What it did was showed that the e-cigarettes were actually performing a little bit better. And what it showed that at six months, 7.8% of the people using e-cigarettes had not smoked a cigarette. Wow. Wait. That's, um... Gee, that's a 92% uh, failure rate. Well, it was a little bit better than the patch. That was seven, or a little bit under 7%, I think. Somewhere in the same ballpark figure. Again, 93% failure rate. They're thinking this is great, newsworthy information that something is mimicking a 90-some percent failure rate. And this is, this is a grand success. <sighs> Again, what's remarkable about this was a month ago when the Gallup poll came out, which was showing kind of similar information. It really was. You know, it was showing that the, the um, a patch was getting about a 5% success rate, different kind of measurement. It was like, of all the people who quit smoking in the United States, how did they quit smoking? Well, they found that, you know, uh, 3% did it by e-cigarettes and 5% did it by... Uh, nicotine patches, 1% <laughs> did it by nicotine gum, if you add up all of those things. And then you could throw in the uh, prescribed medications, the Zyban and Chantex, throw those in. That, that, that added another 2% in. But you throw them all together, and still, people who didn't use these products, the ones that are, you know, the approved products, and then you throw the e-cigarettes in, which are, aren't really approved, but hey, throw those all into the fray too. That's 11%. 89% of the people who quit did not use the approved medications. They did not use the unapproved device here, the e-cigarettes that are in question. And yet, everybody who's focused on smoking cessation, that's all they focus on. Again, the remarkable thing here is not only what the Gallup poll showed about, again, the majority of people who quit smoking did it by all the unapproved methods. Not only is that the important note here, it's still the fact that Outside of people who are watching these videos and maybe have stumbled across the Why Quit site press releases about that Gallup study, no one has seen it. it I never saw it once on a TV. I have never heard it on any radio. I have not seen it in any magazine. It has not been in a single newspaper that I can recall. It has not come across on any Google alerts, like this other one where I'm getting five, ten a day Google alerts about the e-cigarette study. Nothing has been put out about the Gallup study, which again was showing what happened in the real world, how people quit smoking. I'm going to point out why I titled this one what I did. I made two videos about the Gallup study uh, a few weeks back. One of them was just called the Gallup study, you know, showing that cold turkey is the most successful way to quit. The other one was titled, Whatever You Do, Don't Quit Cold Turkey. What was interesting was, wow, the second video, the one that hasn't been out as long, has almost twice as many hits, 400-something versus 200 on the, on the first titled one. It's like the title that caught the people was, whatever you do, don't quit cold turkey. That's a much more important title than, you know, the Gallup study shows most people quit cold turkey. So I realized, well, title is making a real big difference of who sees what. Uh, so by titling this one, ooh, these cigarettes perform as good as a patch, I suspect this one's going to get some viewership. 
great. I'm glad to get the viewership. Uh, I, I will attach the other videos into the description here. Go and look at those other videos because they really do discuss the important issue here. The important issue isn't that we have, you know, one product performing as poorly as another product, which are both basically, again, over a 90% failure rate in general usage. Uh, the important topic here is how most people quit smoking. Most people have quit, are quitting smoking now the way they've been quitting smoking for decades. They are just stopping smoking. They are not delivering uh, another form of nicotine. They are not replacing nicotine with any other drug. They are just stopping smoking. And then they're keeping those quits going by understanding that they can't put nicotine back in their system. We are dealing with nicotine addiction, and the way you stop that addiction is you stop delivering the drug in question. The drug in question is nic nicotine. The other point I'm going to reemphasize here, which I have in all the other videos too, is it's not only that most of the people who have quit have done it by a variation of some sort of cold turkey method of stopping taking the drug. But again, the equally important piece of information here is that we have more former smokers in the United States today than current smokers. So that quitting is possible. It is done by over half the people who have tried, have pulled it off, and they pulled it off, the vast majority, by going cold turkey. You can do it too. If you want out of smoking, do what the majority of successful quitters did. They stopped delivering nicotine and they've kept it out of their body. The way you can make your attempt go the same way and pull off and successfully quit that you'll never have to you know, deal with a quit again is stopping and then making and sticking to a personal commitment to never take another puff.